Welcome back. In this example, we're going to start looking at a grade beam. And I want to look at a grade beam that will be 18 inches wide, concrete grade beam, by 28 inches deep. And to start with, this will be one where a column base plate is coming down on the grade beam. And we're going to do a section through the grade beam. If you remember in some of our earlier sections that we talked about, we had this detail. And what I'm going to do here is simply come through with a section cut that will show this detail of the grade beam. So I'm going to do a cut through it and look at the grade beam. And to do that, the key aspect of it is for this one that I want to do 3 inches equals a foot. And that will give me a ratio of 1 to 4 for the scale factor. To begin with, we're going to start by roughing out the grade beam. With this scale of drawing, basically every, every square will be 1 inch if I were to look at this drawing. So um, an 18 inch wide grade beam would be 18 units wide as far as the, the squares on the scale. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 18. like to do once we get started with it is draw a line that will show the center line of our grade beam. And if we'll remember we had a one inch gap above for non-shrink ground and we also had where we were going to do a 16 inch wide column so that would be eight inches in each direction. quarter inch base plate, so it's slightly less than one of the squares tall. And we said we had non-shrink grout. And then our column was a W10. That means each section, each side of the center line will be five inches each direction. And we're going to show the center line of the web in that view. And our anchor rods were inch and a half in, which would be approximately in this location. And they were three quarter inch diameter, so we'll show them slightly less than an inch. We also said that these were coming down 18 inches into the grade beam, and that would place them down at this elevation. And we had drawn them 
where they were five inches square and they're just now they're slightly protruding through from our previous example the edge of the concrete down below. One of the other aspects of this, so a solution may possibly be these would have a nut that went on the threaded rod that went down into the grade beam. Possible solution to address this would just be uh, if the engineering calculations worked, use a smaller plate, uh, a three inch, three by three plate, would reduce it, allow clear cover of the concrete. For the sides of the grade beam, there's going to be rebar. Um, I'm going to show the rebar to be an inch and a half from the sides, and I'm going to show it to be at least two and a half inches off the bottom. For rebar, we will frequently just draw a line and not sketch its actual dimensions for the width of the bar. Often this will be a number three or a number four bar. I'm going to show it with a number four stir. And as I begin looking at this, I'm going to show number eight bars. A number eight bar is one inch in diameter. So basically what I'm looking for when I do that is simply a quarter inch circle at three inch scale will give me a number eight bar. For this one, I'll show four of those at the bottom and four of these at the top. I can see there's going to be some conflicts there that would probably need to be resolved. Obviously, if you start sketching this out to scale and you're having difficulty fitting parts of it in, that's your early indicator that you need to reevaluate the size of your members and how the engineering solution is going to be laid out. Again, section cut when it continues above. Base plates, structural steel and section. If you wanted to, you can section that. Uh, in the interest of time, often this uh, section, material sections will frequently be left out. Um, frequently, if I'm sketching this down here, I would simply draw a line through it and call it out and do four, number eight, bottom continuous, and then up above, I would call those out as well. Draw a line through them and label them. This example, I'm just showing four, number eight, continuous. Okay. Um, so I'm already knowing, we knew this before from the plan view, this would just be an example at three inch scale. A quick sketch, this has a lot of information on it. The engineering calculations and what we could drive from analysis would for strength and then the design we would calculate and come up with the design values. But then to communicate this in how it goes into construction drawings can often be done with a quick sketch. Um, this complements the work that's being done in the software. But even before we dive deep into putting it into the building information modeling, often a quick hand sketch like this can start to clue us in. I already know I've got some congestion problems here to be reviewed. And that may simply be um, the position of the anchor rod is not movable due to the base plate above. It needs to be there. And so we would just look at how we adjust this. And I know from the concrete code, many of them I need something on the order of an inch and a half 
um, or greater. An inch and a half minimum would be the minimum clear cover for those. So I can already see this is a tight example. Most likely what would typically happen in here is you would do a pilaster or a pier cap wherever the column is coming down and we would widen the grade beam in this area. That has additional costs related to form work but it's much easier to build in the field. And so these are some of the things we're going to highlight as we start to address concrete further in this curriculum. Thank you for your time.